At this point, until any more tests are done, what you have is bleeding in early pregnancy. Over 50% of these pregnancies will proceed normally. Losing a pregnancy during the first 23 weeks is known as a miscarriage. It's so common, we believe that between 1 in 5 to 1 in 8 pregnancies result in a miscarriage. This means, for example, if you take a group of 40 pregnant women, between 5 and 8 of them will miscarry that pregnancy. So when you think about it, it's a lot more common than many of us realize. Given how common it is, you might be wondering what is the procedure for dealing with the miscarriage if you live in the United Kingdom? Well, this is what we discuss in this video as well as frequently asked questions around the subject. So let's begin. Hi, I'm Dr. Sylvia, a consultant in general practice and welcome to Ask Away Health. It's a difficult topic and I appreciate that for many of us it is hard to talk about a miscarriage or pregnancy loss. Whether it's the memory of a past miscarriage or it's a situation that you might be going through right now and perhaps you're searching for information and came across this video, I sympathize and I empathize with you having gone through miscarriage myself in the past. In the United Kingdom, there are support organizations that help with pregnancy loss. It's a good idea reaching out to them if you need to. I'll place the links in the description box for this video. The most common miscarriages happen in the first trimester, that is the first 13 weeks of pregnancy. The first indication that something is going on is usually vaginal bleeding, which could be spotting, a light red flow like an early period, red, brown, light pink bleeding discharge or blood clots being passed vaginally. This might be followed by having lower abdominal pain that feels like menstrual cramps. Most often by the time this happens in most women you've missed your period and you already know that you're pregnant but some people do not. To some women it feels as if they're having a slightly late period and one that seems a little bit less heavy or shorter than usual. The bleeding and pain or cramps that you experienced were actually a miscarriage and not a late period. But in any event, if you're pregnant and develop any type of vaginal bleeding plus or minus abdominal or pelvic pain or cramps, please contact your general practitioner or ring 111. Most times your GP will want to confirm that you're pregnant and this can be done simply by letting letting them know of your positive home pregnancy test. The next important thing is the assessment of all the symptoms going on at that time. If you're having abdominal pain, how severe is it and where is it? Is it one-sided? Has the pain been getting worse since it started? Do you feel dizzy or lightheaded? Have you had pain while opening your bowels since this bleeding started? How heavy is the blood flow? Are you soaking your underwear or any pads you've put on or are you experiencing bleeding only when you wipe after using the toilet. Now, if your response to these questions suggests a more serious problem such as an ectopic pregnancy, that is where the pregnancy is growing outside the womb, then you will need an emergency assessment. Depending on the practice in your area, you might be invited to your local out of hours unit to see the on-call GP or the emergency department and subsequently admitted to the gynecology on-call team. If an ectopic pregnancy is thought to be unlikely, your GP will arrange for you to be seen at the early pregnancy assessment unit to assess the state of the pregnancy. At this point, until any more tests are done, what you have is bleeding in early pregnancy. Over 50% of these pregnancies will proceed normally. So experiencing light to moderate bleeding and pain must always be assessed. So now you've been referred to the early pregnancy unit or EPAU. This unit is where you will have tests to conduct confirm whether this early pregnancy bleeding is as a result of miscarriage or whether your pregnancy will continue. If you are over six weeks pregnant, going by the first day of your last menstrual period, then you will have an ultrasound scan to detect the baby's heartbeat as evidence that the pregnancy is safe and continuing. The scan is performed by a sonographer and usually involves gently inserting a probe through the vagina to look inside the womb. This is known as a transvaginal scan, but if you prefer, you could request to have a transabdominal scan in which the probe is placed over your pelvis and lower abdomen to look 
look for the baby's heartbeat. But you should know that this method is less accurate in doing so than the transvaginal scan. In the circumstance that you've started bleeding but you're not yet six weeks pregnant, it's too early for the scan to detect the baby's heartbeat. So after your examination, you would have a blood test for the hormone beta HCG levels as this will give us a confirmation of whether or not you are pregnant and if the levels are lower than what we expect for the date of your pregnancy that's your gestational age this might suggest that a miscarriage is going on. The blood test is usually repeated between 24 to 48 hours later to see whether the levels are either going up or they're dropping because we expect in a normal pregnancy for beta HC levels to continue to increase up to a particular point. So if your levels are not increasing after another 48 hours, that is another indication that the pregnancy is likely ending in a miscarriage. If the blood test or scan confirms a miscarriage, there are different treatment options available, which we will look at in a separate video. But please let me know in the comment section, what options do you know of for treating miscarriage? What have you experienced before? For now, let's consider common questions about a miscarriage. Number one, what are the common causes of a miscarriage. The most common cause of a miscarriage in the first trimester or in early pregnancy is abnormality in the genetic makeup or the chromosomes of the fetus of the baby. We don't know why these abnormalities happen but it seems that your body determines that something is not quite right with that pregnancy leading to the miscarriage. Some people look at this as nature's way of solving the problem. When scientists looked at tissues of pregnancies from following miscarriages, over 50% showed some genetic abnormality or the other. But in another study, around 50% of cases did not show any cause for the miscarriage. Usually, most couples will proceed to have a normal pregnancy on the next occasion. The next question, are there any specific risk factors that can increase the risk of having a miscarriage? The first is abnormal womb conditions. Now, these could exist from birth. For example, someone who has a structural abnormality of their womb, but they could also be as a result of conditions like fibroids or endometriosis. Next are hormonal conditions in the mother. This could be conditions like polycystic ovary syndrome, PCOS, diabetes mellitus, and thyroid disease. Number three, having low vitamin D levels, which is more likely to happen if you have dark skin. So being of black or South Asian origin, covering your skin when outdoors or spending most of your time indoors, a low vitamin D diet. So not eating enough foods like eggs, milk, yogurt, cheese, some fortified cereals or fats and being overweight with a BMI above 30. These are some conditions associated with low vitamin D levels. It's important to ensure that before you fall pregnant, your vitamin D levels are normal because there is no evidence that taking vitamin D after you fall pregnant will help prevent a miscarriage. But being at the right level before you fall pregnant may help reduce the chances of having a miscarriage. The next risk factor for having a miscarriage is a previous miscarriage. Yes, it is true that most women will go on to have a normal pregnancy after a miscarriage, but a previous miscarriage does increase the risk of a future one. And the more miscarriages you've had in the past, the more likely you are to have another. Another risk factor is being from a black ethnic group. There is evidence from studies that black African and black Caribbean women are at more risk of a miscarriage than white women. The increased risk for black women having a miscarriage compared to white women is 43% according to a study published in the Lancet Journal in 2021. The reasons for this difference are complex. It might be from pre-existing health conditions. Still, inequality in healthcare and treatment is also recognized to play a role in the UK. Conditions like fibroids, high BMI, low vitamin D, high blood pressure, sickle cell disease, and diabetes, which affect black women significantly more, can also contribute to the higher risk. The third question, 
How can I access emotional support or help after experiencing pregnancy loss or a miscarriage? In the UK, women experiencing a miscarriage can receive support via their GP or while on admission or on discharge from the early pregnancy assessment unit. If for some reason you're not offered support, you should request this because for many families, it contributes to helping with recovery after pregnancy loss. The next question is, are there any lifestyle changes or precautions that can help prevent the possibility of a miscarriage. Well, there are ways that your lifestyle and the environment in which you live could affect the chances of a miscarriage. We've observed a link between miscarriage and smoking, drinking alcohol with levels of 10 units or more per week being implicated, increased caffeine intake, and obesity. All of these conditions can cause harm to a pregnancy. Smoking and alcohol during pregnancy should be totally avoided. And it's recommended that you limit your caffeine intake when you're pregnant as well. Currently, the NHS recommends less than 200 milligrams of caffeine daily when you're pregnant. So watch your tea, coffee, chocolate, fizzy drinks, and so on. Check out this link I've put here to calculate how much caffeine you're taking when you're pregnant. Exposure to toxic environments that can develop from air pollution or household chemicals may also increase the risk of a miscarriage. Next, what role does age play in the risk of a miscarriage and how does it affect fertility? Well, age is recognized to play a role in fertility. In women, the number and quality of our eggs reduces as we age, which directly affects our chances of getting pregnant. In addition, even when a pregnancy happens, the older a woman is, the more likely that a baby she conceives will have abnormal genes thus increasing the risk of miscarriage. The risk of miscarriage is nearly 10% in women under or around the age of 25, while it's over 70% in women from the age of 45 onwards. This age factor also applies to men, although it is less pronounced than for women. The miscarriage risk starts to go up for men over the age of 45 years. There's still a lot to say about coping with miscarriage. For example, what medical options interventions or treatments are available if you live in the UK? Is there a recommended waiting period before trying for a baby again? And what are the current tests or screenings that can help assess any future pregnancy risk? Let me know your thoughts and experiences about miscarriages. And if you have any questions around the topic, please send them to my email health information service. The link will also be in the description box below. Please check out these videos while you're waiting for the next one and I'll see you again soon.